Hello guys and welcome back to Thai Talk with Dan, the channel where we talk about everything Thailand. In today's video, guys, we're going to talk about myself, how a 40-year-old man has been living in Thailand for the past six years with a wife and a one-year-old son. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to discuss my little life story, but I promise not to bore you too much, so let's roll the intro and let's get on with this video today. Hello guys and welcome back to Thai Talk with Dan. Okay, so people that don't currently know who I am, I have a small YouTube channel that basically gives advice to people and also tells stories. And the main reason why my channel exists is to literally help other people when they travel over here to Thailand or they choose to come and live here and I'm just doing my best to make it the safest place for people as much as I can. So enough of all that guys, let's get on for the reason why you're watching this video right now. So six years ago guys, I had a fairly decent business. I was working extremely hard literally every day, just literally solely focusing on money. That was my main driving component. However, the money never made me happy, no matter how much I made. And reflecting back on it, guys, I can honestly state that the reason why I don't think the money made me happy is because I wasn't in love in the relationship that I was in. I was surrounded by snaky types of people uh, because I was in sales and marketing. And I just felt pretty miserable. Nothing I did, nothing I bought, Literally, nothing made me happy. So guys, I put a lot of my story on my channel in my previous video, so I'm not going to go super deep into everything. So literally, I'm just going to skirt across certain things. So anyway, I come over to Thailand with a friend, stayed here for a couple of months, went back home, got rid of everything, and then came back to Thailand on a six-month visa. Spent six months in Thailand and realised that no, England is not for me, so I decided to buy a five-year Thailand elite visa and remain in Thailand. Now, I was lucky that I could afford to buy the five-year Thailand visa at the time because I had over 50 grand savings in the bank account and I had quite a healthy weekly income from the subscription service. Um, I managed to accumulate a lot of subscribers to my marketing company so that was helping uh, pay for me basically in thailand so i could survive now i spent a long time traveling around thailand trying to find somewhere that i was happy to live i tried living on an island called chang i hated it in the high season it was too busy for me and the food was terrible what I always find in tourist places is they never seem to put the effort in into the food because they know people are just on holidays and they come and go. So it doesn't matter in regards to customer retention because they're going to pay their bill and then they're more than likely going to go home sooner or later anyway. I tried to live in Bang Surrey in Chonbury, which was a nice place, but eventually I split up from the girl that I was with and I just wanted to get the hell out of there. I moved over to Korat, Nakhon Ratchasima, you may know it as, and it was a very, very busy city. I tried Khao Yai, which was a bit more peaceful, but it was way too peaceful for me. And in the low season, most of the shops, restaurants, etc., were closed, so there was literally nothing to do there. I tried to live up north in Pai, in, uh, just uh, past Chiang Mai, and that was all right for around about six months. And eventually I got bored of that because of the smoky season. 
and how cold it gets there in the winter. You've literally got ice there on the floor. I tried to live in Chayapum. I tried to live in Konken. I tried to live in Ubon uh, Ratchatani, uh, Warin, uh, Sisaket. I literally travelled all over the place, guys, trying to find a decent place that I was happy to settle in. So in total, guys, I spent a couple of years travelling around. So I did my best, guys, trying to get to learn the language and trying to understand the Thai people because I found that in every place that I went to, the Thai people were a little bit different. So I did my best to try to understand the culture, the way they think, um, how they live, um, and what goes through the mind of a Thai person. And I literally spent two years assessing Thai people so I could fully understand them. It's always been my hobby to be interested in people and understanding the human brain, etc. I basically love psychology. So it was right up my street moving to a different country and getting to learn new people. Also, with all this traveling around, I had two relationships. The first one I have broadcasted... Um, on my channel you all literally know about that one and the second one i've not told the full story but i've told you part of the story about the second woman that i was with and these two women taught me a hell of a lot about thai women now just over three and a half years ago i come over to buriram which is in isan and in buriram i decided that i actually liked it here and I decided to rent a um, apartment. It was 3,500 baht, just a basic one bedroom apartment to live in. And I just literally concentrated on work because by that time, my subscriptions were over. I had to close my business to save money on tax, etc. So I had to shut down my limited company and I had to set up a new company and just work for myself. So I was working all the time just basically making sure I had enough money to survive. And at that point, guys, I decided that Buriram was going to be my final stopping point before I retreated and moved back to England just because of funds, guys. My money literally ran dry. So in order to pass the time, I'd go on like dating applications, put my profile on there and see what was about. See if there was any, I don't know, different type of Thai women, I suppose. You know, you never know. It can be quite interesting. You get a lot of Thai women that are pretty much the same, and then you'll get the odd ones that are very, very different to the rest, and they're the ones that I always look for. So because I were going home, I didn't really care that much about the dating profile, and I basically stated to, um, to the women of Buriram that I'm a single guy, um, there's no woman lurking in the background that's going to beat you up. You don't have to worry. And I have no money. I literally do not have a pot to piss in. I know the score. You're not going to get one bar out of me. But if you want a nice guy, you want to laugh. Good guy, good sense of humour. Doesn't go uh, being with different women. I'm not a butterfly, etc. Then come and say hi. We can always just be friends and get to know each other and that's how I met my wife so when I met my wife it was very very bad timing because my funds had literally depleted and I needed to go back to the UK but I still had my Thailand elite visa in order to remain in Thailand so it was just literally day-to-day -day living and just survival that I needed to continue but I wasn't very happy with just existing. And I knew that if I went back to England, I could easily build my business back up quite quickly. I still had all my contacts. I still had all these people that would happily work for me. And I could become quite welfare within around about three to six months. It's literally that fast with the type of business that I'm involved in. And then I did what I shouldn't have done. And I fell in love. This woman didn't care that I was skint. Um, she, had a, she had a house here behind me where I could live. You know, she was fine to let me stay here. Um, but it took a while, guys. We had to date. We got to know each other. I told her the truth. Told her that I'm going to need to go back home, etc., etc. And we decided that we was going to live together. 
and just take each day as it comes. And for the past three and a half years, I've been hustling, I've been grinding, and I've been working hard to make sure that I make enough money for us all to survive. And she works as well, guys. When I met her, she was selling clothes online, and since then, she's been selling creams, tablets, uh, food, lots of different things. Whatever makes money, she'll literally work hard and try and sell it, and most of it is done online. And 15 months ago, um, we had a baby boy, William. And he's with us now. He's 15 months old. He's a complete nightmare, but I love him to pieces. He's got a wicked sense of humour. And he keeps me busy, but also makes me work even harder because I now have another mouth to feed and I have someone else that I need to provide for. So for a long time now, guys, I've been... I have been literally working seven days a week every week with not much rest i'm hoping that this year for christmas we can go away and have some kind of little holiday and a little break as a family which would be really really nice because it's literally been non-stop now my thailand elite visa has finally finished it's ran out that five-year visa that i bought as game over but i managed to get a free six month extension because of the covid issues and stuff so i got the free six month visa and that ends in january of next year so not long to go so this month i need to go to immigration and i need to apply for a non-o visa because i have a son here in thailand i can literally produce his birth certificate show that I'm earning the equivalent of 400,000 baht over the 12 month period in order for me to remain in Thailand for the sole purpose of being able to take care of my son and the family. So fingers crossed, I get that visa uh, this month because we're now in November. Now, since I started my channel, people have asked me to do like videos like a day in the life of Dan and all that kind of caper. But it's pretty boring, guys. I live super, super, super normal. I don't get up to anything too crazy. Most of my days, I'm sat here where I am right now, basically working, uh, doing marketing, providing marketing for customers. And that's what I do to get by. Some weeks are good. Some weeks I don't get anything. Some weeks are slow. It's just the way it is when you work for yourself, trying to make money. And the YouTube channel for me, guys, is something to pass the time in my free time, something to keep me busy and something that I find is helpful, especially when I get messages and emails from people, just like I received today from someone that basically stated that my videos and my advice and the stories that I've presented on the channel have helped people uh, while they've been in Thailand and stop people from getting scammed or losing a lot of money or having a broken heart, etc, 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 guys. So it's nice to hear from people like that. Now, with my channel, I try to be super honest. And from what I've noticed on YouTube is that the honest channels are not really that successful. Normally, you've got to do a lot of fluff and a lot of bullcrap, etc, in order to get the views and the high subscribers. But I don't literally want to provide that type of content as it's super fake. And what's the point when I can spend the time that I do on YouTube on my marketing and make uh, more money? I actually lose money doing this. So doing my marketing, I can make more money. So there's no point me doing something that I don't enjoy. Not everybody's going to like my content, guys. I get that. I mean, on every single video that I produce, I'll always get around about four or five dislikes from from people which I don't think is that bad really now I don't get thousands upon thousands of views but what I do get what I've noticed is that around about 60% of my videos are being watched on average um, from like around about 2,000 or 5,000 people on average people tend to watch my videos uh, for around about 60% of the length of the video and that's accumulated all together spread out so I think that's quite good when I've actually done some research online. So that's good news. It means that people are enjoying the content, but because I'm a small channel, YouTube does not push the content out 
to more and more people. They want you to have a YouTube channel for years and years and years in order for them to push your content out. The only way you can get massive views is by getting your wallet out of your pocket and spending money online for to buy fake subscribers so your channel looks bigger, so YouTube will push more uh, videos out to people. Um, and it'll also help people subscribe to your channel when they think you're some kind of big YouTuber. You can also pay for ads as well. So you can get your advert, so you, so you can get your uh, video, sorry, pushed out to people from all around the world and you can spend money doing that. And a lot of YouTubers will spend a big portion of the money that they make each and every month on marketing their channel so they can make it a business. And I've just not got down that route. Literally everything that I've got from my channel, even though it's still small, is all done organically, which is great. So anyway, guys, I feel like I'm waffling now. I just hope that I sort my visa out this month so I can remain with my family here in Thailand and um, hopefully work harder or work smarter or try to recruit and hire uh, people from within Thailand that want to earn extra income, etc. in order to try to make my business a little bit bigger without having to go back to the UK in order to do that and if I can do something like that then great because I am a workaholic I do like to uh, spend my days working it's better than sitting around being bored crazy I do live in Isan I do live in rural Thailand and if you don't have much to do or you don't have any hobbies it can literally send you mental okay guys well thanks for listening if you've got any question guys put it down in the comments. If you've got anything to say, put it down in, in the comments. If you want to help me out, hit the subscribe button. If you like the content, click like, guys, and I will see you again tomorrow as I produce a video almost daily.